Well, good morning. Good Thursday morning. It's good to be here with you this morning. It's going to be a joyous day. Uh, the weather's getting a little bit warmer and it's a time of uh, being able to just be able to do things out as now more and more restrictions uh, are being lifted regarding COVID across the nation and uh, also in our area as well. So it's a, a beautiful, beautiful, joyful day. And I wanna say thank you to Mr. Carver and also to Miss Paula, who is way down in Florida right now, uh, for leading us in our worship at home last night. Uh, a great worship at home experience and uh, also the many activities I've had. It was great yesterday too. Uh, we had our Glen Square worship, which uh, if many of you are unfamiliar with, we have been having Glen Square worship, which is over in, uh, in Glen Burnie. Uh, it is a wonderful small community that we have been having outreach uh, and uh, kind of a sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ in that uh, very closed community. And it's been faithfully served by John and Helen Nielsen for many years. But yesterday we were able to celebrate over there with the family of uh, the widow of the individual who really kind of helped start off. And that was Herb LeCompte, uh, along with Julie, his granddaughter. And yesterday was a celebration or a reminder. It's hard to say celebration because it's a tough one. It was a year ago that uh, Herb had received his crown of glory that he uh, passed on from this life into uh, our Lord's heavenly kingdom. And that's kind of where my devotion is a little bit today. Uh, not just the reminder of Herb, but also uh, in the last couple of months, many in our community have, uh, have passed on from this life. They have experienced uh, the taste of death, but they've also, uh, those who have faith in Jesus, have entered into the joy of their master. And tomorrow we'll be having a, a funeral service for our sister in Christ, Doris Williams. And I just was finishing up writing the, the sermon for that just well, about five minutes ago, so that's why I'm a couple minutes late. But today uh, I want to use a lesson that we're going to be having for our epistle this coming Sunday. It comes from Paul's words to the Corinthian Christians, chapter 15, which are wonderful words of confidence in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and likewise in our resurrection as well. And so I'm gonna share with you words from 1 Corinthians 15, verses three through eight and 12 through 20, and then a short reflection, a devotion on that, a reminder to us of why the resurrection matters. Uh, as Paul is uh, using a, a, an argument within Greek uh, philosophy to uh, to say why it matters and it, and why there's a, a hope and a confidence for us. Now, this devotion is one that I read along with all my other daily devotions. Uh, this one comes from Lutheran Hour Ministries. The text begins from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 8 and 12 through 20. Paul says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles. Last of all, as one untimely born, he also appeared to me. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. And we are found to be misrep misrepresenting God, because we testify that God has raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins." Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If, Christ, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are the most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Here ends the word of our Lord. Now, as I shared yesterday in our, in our um, lectionary story, our Bible said that meets at 1030 and we met in the fellowship hall because right now the preschool is having the You Are Special um, uh, festivities for this week. We, uh, we talked about how many people actually saw the risen Christ. And in the first verse, that's why I wanted to share this with you. Uh, for those who were in the Bible study yesterday, I was like, well, you know, roughly that we know, you know, by the text, the scriptures, uh, over 500, you know, probably 550 or so. And this is where it comes from, from uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses uh, 7 and 8. 
And so we, we know how many people actually saw him, and there's probably many more than that, especially who were out on the beach or who were at the, at the meal of Emmaus and all those things. But what we have here is the encouragement that all these if propositions, if this, if this, if this, if none of this is true, if then we are the most to be pitied, and then he gets to this really big but, and I had fun saying big but, but a huge but because, but Christ has been risen from the dead. Because he's been raised, all those ifs are washed away. They are excluded. There's a lot of fun of saying, well, if this, then that. If this, then that. It's philosophical reasoning. But Christ has been. So there's no more ifs. It's a reality. And so there are people who think that Jesus' resurrection doesn't even matter. What matters is Jesus' teaching. They say, I can follow that without believing the resurrection. For others, resurrection looks like an embarrassment an afterthought, a happy ending tacked on because otherwise things would just be too tragic to deal with. So it's some mythical story that makes us feel good when we're confronted with death. But all this is not right because historically Jesus has risen from the dead. And we ought to think about that and celebrate that. So when we talk about a celebration of someone's life, in the memorial service. We're celebrating the life they have in Christ. That's why I'm always curious about when this person may have been baptized. By the way, for Doris, 33 days old, when she was only a month old, she was baptized on Reformation Sunday, which is pretty amazing. But, you know, when we talk about this, we realize that the heart of everything that God has done for us is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so what does the resurrection mean? It means so many things. It means that Jesus really is who he says he is, and not simply just a great teacher, although he was, who got confused about his identity. No, he knew who he was. God would not raise a liar from the dead, even a mistaken liar, even a, a really good, um, a, you know, a good intending liar. No, the resurrection is God's stamp of approval on Jesus and everything that he ever said or did now, Jesus has risen from the dead. That means that everything that he ever told us, that he ever taught, that he ever said is true. And we can put our full weight on that complete trust. We can be faithful for we know that he has promised and he is faithful. He is trustworthy and true. And his promises will hold, will never let us down because Jesus has risen. Now, the resurrection also means that our sins are completely forgiven, really forgiven. I mean, gone forever. Too many times I come across Christians, people who I serve as their pastor, and they tell me, yeah, they're struggling with something they had done, an atrocious sin in their mind. Long, long ago, I said, yeah, but you got to realize that has been forgiven. The resurrection proves that. Jesus' death on the cross paid for those sins, all of them, no matter how horrible and despicable you see them as being, so does God. He hates sin, but he gave his son to die, to take away our sins, to forgive our sins. That means that God has really accepted Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And there's nothing, I mean, nothing left for us to do. So that horrible guilt that troubles you at night, that one that keeps returning to remind you and kind of beating you up for what you remember doing is a fake. It's a lie. Because there's nothing left to pay you are truly forgiven. You are forgiven because Jesus has risen. Now, Jesus' resurrection means that we can have a future to look out forward to. Death is not the end. Pain, suffering, loss of strength, loss of memory, these are not the end either for God's people. Jesus has risen, the first of all mankind, and all those who belong to him will also rise. It is as sure and certain as the sun is rising in about 10 minutes. Jesus is the first, but he will not be the last. You will follow him. You too will be raised and enjoy that new life with all of God's people forever. Well, that's the devotion I want to share, an encouragement, because really I went us to encourage one another with these words. And Gail, as you, as you remind us there, even if a faith the size of a mustard seed, that the beautiful thing is it's not the size of the amount of our faith. That's why if you have tiny faith, it's all about God's promise and what Jesus has done, that he 
died on Calvary's cross to forgive our sins, that he taught us how to love God and how to love each other. And all that is validated. It's a stamp of approval by God in the resurrection. And because of that, whether we have faith as small as a mustard seed or we have faith as huge as a house, the fact is, it's all because of what Jesus did. And so therefore, we trust in him. We encourage each other. And we look forward to the day that we will be rejoined in heaven with all those who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, all those who have been joined together by our faith, all those who rely upon God's gift of grace to us in our Savior, Jesus. So that was the, the devotion I wanted to share today, especially with so many, um, so many losses in the last weeks, in the last uh, months of individuals in our, in our lives, that we have comfort, that we have hope, that we have assurance, and that we can look forward with joy, knowing that death is no longer, no longer an end. Uh, I, I wanted to share, as I also had that devotion there, uh, the, the many activities we have at Galilee that maybe, as I was reminded yesterday, we're not always aware of because they kind of happen uh, away from our normal church proper, but ones that I'd encourage you to pray for. And if you ever want to come, you can participate and support. One of those is the very long time ministry at Glen Square. Uh, COVID had put it, made us put a pause on that for a little bit, but uh, it has been back and it has been a joy as new faces and new souls are coming to hear the word. And uh, it's like our worship at home in the evenings where uh, we have our brother Chris Carver lead us in a, in a Bible study devotional uh, time. On Wednesdays, we have our brother, Mr. John Nielsen. Uh, many of you, I hope, know John. Uh, you, he and his wife, Helen, are mainstays at our Saturday uh, evening service. She plays beautifully on the keyboard, and so that we're able to have a worship service there and proclaim the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Savior. Uh, so keep the ministries at Glen Square in your, in, our prayer, in your prayers as we continue every Wednesday to be there. And I have the joy of, of also joining them and celebrating with the saints there at Glen Square. And if you ever want to come and uh, support and be part of that community, we would love to have you. Uh, but with that all being said, I know this devotion is getting a little long. Let's close with just a, a time of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for raising Jesus and that you will raise us also. Keep us in that faith, in that confidence, in that hope, so that as we live through this valley of the shadow of death, we can look forward to a much, much brighter tomorrow. Lord, bless all those who are in mourning, in loss, in grief, with your comfort and peace that can only be given through the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus. So we ask this in his name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning for our uh, devotional time. And uh, we look forward to this weekend uh, joining together in worship, in prayer, in praise, in hope, and in confidence. So have a wonderful day. Know that I love you. And aloha.